So here we have in the Dungeon Master's Guide an idea of how some cover might work. You trace this out from the corner of your attacking square, and if any line coming from that can't touch all four corners of the uh, opponent's square, then he's got some partial cover. If he's got even more cover here, if like three of those corners are blocked, uh, then he's got, what is it called, three-fourths cover. So I think with our rogue, we might want to take a shot with the bow and arrow, but we might have some partial cover against one of the skeletons. So our rogue's going to move down here, going to shoot against this weaker skeleton and see if he can take it out with his bow and arrow. Um, it's got partial cover, and what that does is it's going to add two to the skeleton's defense or basically minus two to the attack roll. So let's see what we get. We've rolled a 14. The attack bonus is five, so that's a 19. Minus two is 17. That's good enough to hit. Now we've also got this uh, sneak attack damage because the fighter, our friend, is still engaged with the skeleton. <clears throat> so damage here is going to be 2d6 plus 3. A 5 and a 1 again. 5, 6, 7, 8, that's enough. Uh, this arrow maybe knocks the skull off of the skeleton and it crumbles to the ground. That skeleton is defeated, taken out. Next, we're still in the surprise round. We haven't really let our cleric shine yet. Let's see if we can move in and make an attack. He's going to move here, uh, also dealing with a little bit of partial cover, but he's going to... Th Doesn't he have a hand axe that he can throw? Yes, he does. The hand axe is going to be at plus four. Here's the attack roll. We got an eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, minus 2, that's a miss. So perhaps the hand axe uh, bounces off along the uh, pillar here. Uh, missed attack. And let's let our wizard uh, move up. And also, once again, partial cover. I th No, that's, that should be a clear shot. Let's go with a ray of frost again. 17, that's good enough to hit even without taking into attack bonus. That was uh, 1d8 and it was cold damage. <laughs> One damage. So uh, just got a little nippy there. Brought him down to a 7. That's everybody. Now the regular combat uh, encounter will begin. And we have to determine who is going to go first, which side. So I think I'm going to keep it simple and do side initiative. So we're going to take this white d20. And I'm going to take my red d20 for the skeleton. And let's just see which side goes first. This is another optional method in the Dungeon Master's Guide to speed up combat. There's no modifiers, it's just straight die roll. And we've got a four and a three. So the heroes get to act again. Surely we can take out this uh, skeleton. So why don't we follow the initiative order that we kind of have uh, set before. We're gonna let our um, rogue move over here and Maybe move. I don't want to take a ranged attack that close. Um, tell you what, let's let this fighter go first. This fighter is armed with the sword. Let's have this fighter step in and engage and take a swing. So, great sword attack. We've rolled a natural one. That is a miss. Nothing we can do about it. Uh, next, we're all friends here. Who do we want to go 
uh, have go next since we're doing side initiative. Let's let the noble uh, make his attack. A nine. Uh, I think he only has plus four to his attack. Let's double check. No, he's got a great axe, plus five. So that's a 14. 14 is good enough to hit. 1d12 plus three. So that's five damage. Almost. We've got him down to two. Then let's let our wizard take his shot again. Um, you know, I think that's going to be boosted all the way up to three quarters cover, isn't it? Yeah, he's really having a hard time uh, tracing his attack lines and getting good sight. So that's going to be plus five to the defense. He makes his attack and rolls a one. He misses. Uh, our cleric's going to shift weapons and move up and go with a melee attack, trying to finish this guy off. Remember, our cleric has a soldier background. He's going to move in with a warhammer. So that's actually going to do uh, double damage if it, if it hits. So let's see what happens here. We rolled a 17 on the attack. That's a hit. 1d8 plus 2. We rolled a 4. Now, just a quick question. Uh, when you're doubling that damage, do you add in the modifier two times? Let's, let's see if that answer is there. Well, I believe it was the player's handbook that said that resistance or vulnerability is calculated after the modifiers are added in. So, 4 plus 2 is 6 times two is 12 damage. The cleric with the warhammer smashes the skeleton to pieces, defeating it. So our heroes have successfully made an ambush on the skeleton guards and taken them out before taking any damage themselves. Well, this was a, um, a lair, so I'm gonna put a, a treasure token here so let's find out what kind of treasure might be in this uh, skeleton's area. And to do that, we'll go to the Dungeon Master's Guide. This is coming from page 137, a treasure hoard. This is going to be from challenge level 0 to 4. The skeletons are within that range. So we've got a variety of coins that could be found here. Uh, copper pieces, silver pieces, some gold pieces. And then there's uh, a chance here to find either some gems or art objects or magic items. And uh, let's take a roll on the chart and see what comes up, if anything. Well, first, let's see if we get any valuable objects. We've rolled a 24. There are 2d4 25 gold piece art objects. So 2d4, a uh, total of five. Five objects worth a hundred and, uh, I'm sorry, 25 gold pieces a piece. So these could be uh, anything the DM can imagine. It could be um, uh, certain um, charms, uh, rolled up uh, paintings, um, any sort of art object that uh, might be valuable. Little sculptures, whatever that could be. Trinkets that someone was carrying uh, on a charm bracelet, whatever. Well next, the fun one, or it could be majorly disappointing if we don't roll well, are the magic items. Did we find anything? We've rolled a 50. And a 50 just tells us we get to roll 1d6 times on table A. Well, up here, page 144, is table A. Uh, not the most impressive stuff, but... I mean, gosh, we don't have any magic items now, so anything is great. Let's roll a d6. Three times. We're going to roll three times here on this uh, chart. 
Let's see what we find. Uh, a 46. A potion of healing. Uh, 22. Another potion of healing. An 84. A spell scroll of first level. All right, so I've got our loot recorded, uh, noted in my computer here, what we found. The sil uh, copper pieces, silver pieces, gold pieces, total two potions of healing, which I will assume as such a common magical item, they know what it is. And one magic scroll, and I just kind of chose a spell at random. It's a first level wizard spell, Identify. So, in case they come across anything of greater value and they're not sure what it is, they can use the spell scroll identify to, um, to find out what its magical properties are. Alright, we've survived another set of encounters. We've avoided a trap and ambushed a set of skeleton guards. We are ready to continue exploring to see if we can find the... Uh, church and the holy um, artifact. So catch me later for some more Castle Ravenloft and learning Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition.